Maintaining healthy feet on dairy cattle requires consistent effort. Trace mineral nutrition and hoof trimming are just two components of a good hoof health program. Optimizing trace mineral nutrition through the use of Zinpro Performance Minerals contributes to healthy skin and claw horn integrity. Proper functional and therapeutic trimming techniques also contribute to reduce lameness, improve productivity, and overall animal well-being. Cows with healthy, pain-free feet stay in the herd longer, have higher milk production, and generate more long-term profit for the dairy operation. Proper hoof trimming focuses on three objectives. Return the hoof to the correct length. Balance weight distribution within the claw and between the claws with the objective of achieving equal weight distribution between the inside and outside claws on each foot. And apply therapeutic trimming techniques to correct any lesions that are present. When setting up maintenance trimming protocols, consider trimming lactating dairy cows two times per year. Trim all cows at dry off and again at 90 to 120 days in milk. When trimming springing heifers, do so approximately six to eight weeks prior to calving. In addition to maintenance trimming, use locomotion scoring to identify lame animals for therapeutic trimming as quickly as possible. Recording a farm's trimming data can provide a valuable tool for managing and analyzing a hoof care program. Trimming records that are entered into a herd management record keeping system, such as Dairy Comp 305, can be used to generate trim lists and evaluate lameness prevalence within a herd. During this video, we will use specific terms related to the anatomy of the dairy cow foot. It's important to understand this anatomy before beginning the trimming process. A rear view of the claw shows the heel bulb, wall, white line, sole, and interdigital space, while a side view of the claw displays the coronary band, wall, heel bulb, and a baxial groove. It's highly recommended that all hoof trimming be done only by properly trained personnel. Over trimming or incorrect trimming can actually contribute to lameness and cause cows to leave the herd prematurely. Proper trimming requires that the animal be adequately restrained in a manner that will prevent injury to both the animal and the trimmer. A well-designed trim chute provides a secure and low-stress method to hold animals. There are two common chute types and each works well for trimming. A stand-up chute uses a belt to support the cow so the feet can be secured for trimming. A layover or tip chute rotates the cow 90 degrees allowing all four feet to be viewed. To minimize any risk for injury, the use of personal protective equipment is recommended. Examples include the use of protective gloves to shield your hands, hearing protection for your ears, and eye protection to protect against dust and claw fragments. Here are the tools you will need to make your hoof trimming process efficient and successful. The Zinpro Hoof Check Tool was developed with three key elements in mind, ensuring proper claw length while also maintaining proper heel depth and sole thickness. The Zinpro Hoof Check Tool is available through your local Zinpro representative. Remember, the difference between a good trim and a bad trim may be a matter of millimeters. Additional tools you will need include a chipper wheel or electric wheel grinder to help remove excess claw horn, hoof nipper, hoof knives for modeling between the claws and also for removing diseased tissue associated with claw lesions, the Zinpro hoof check tool, hoof tester, vet wrap, blocks, and glue for adhering the blocks. Zinpro recommends trimming personnel use the five-step Dutch trimming method. Begin with the inside claw of the rear foot. Use the Zinpro hoof check tool to determine proper toe length from the hairline to the tip of the toe. Remove excess toe length by making a cut perpendicular to the sole. It's important to note that three and a quarter inches is the appropriate toe length for average Holstein cows and bulls. Never trim any claw less than three and a quarter inches in length. After trimming the inside claw to the proper length, determine proper sole thickness. Sole thickness is measured at the tip of the toe where your initial cut was made. Trim any excess sole in the toe area to a thickness of one quarter inch. When the sole is trimmed to the proper thickness, the white line will appear as a ring around the inside of the toe. When trimmed properly, the sole will be flat, creating an even weight-bearing surface from the toe to the heel. Avoid removing heel horn from the inside claws on the rear feet. This will reduce claw angle. Soles trimmed too thin may appear pink. You can apply pressure with a hoof tester or hoof knife to assess sole thickness. 
If the sole is flexible when pressure is applied, the sole is too thin. An important tip to remember is to avoid trimming claws that are less than three and a quarter inches in length. Short claws already have thin soles. Step two involves trimming the outside claw on the rear feet. Use your hoof check tool, then trim the toe of the outer claw to the same length of the inner claw by making a cut perpendicular to the sole. Trim the sole to the proper thickness. Keep in mind weight distribution within the claw and between the claws. The sole of the outside claw should be trimmed to the same height as the inside claw to provide even weight distribution. The handle of the hoof knife can be used to assess weight distribution within the claw and between the claws. When trimming the front feet, apply the same techniques used in steps one and two, beginning with the outside claw first. Step three consists of modeling the soles. Proper modeling relieves pressure on the typical sole ulcer site and helps prevent buildup of manure between the claws. An important tip to remember when modeling claws correctly is to protect the toe triangle and avoid cutting into the white line on the inside of the toe. Step four is to identify and therapeutically trim any lesions that are present. Look for the presence of any hemorrhage or abscess in the sole or white line. A hoof tester can be used to identify painful areas in the claw. Also evaluate the skin between the toes or on the heels for evidence of infectious claw lesions. If any signs of lesions are present, apply therapeutic trim techniques. Please refer to the therapeutic trim video for more information. Step five is to remove any loose horn in the heel area and trim down any visible ridges. Now that we have completed a maintenance trim, let's recap the steps involved. Step one, trim the inner claw. Step two, trim the outer claw, check for balance within the claw and between the claws. Step three, model the soles. Step four, inspect the sole for lesions. Step five, trim loose horn. We've now returned the claw to its correct shape and restored normal weight distribution within the claw. Correct functional claw trimming will improve productivity and animal well-being. In addition to cows receiving scheduled maintenance trims, lame cows should be identified and sent to the trim chute for lesion identification and treatment. Steps one through three of the Dutch trimming method are completed first, followed by step four, therapeutic trimming. Using tools such as a hoof knife and hoof tester, the trimmer can investigate the claw for potential lesions. Some lesions are obvious, while others require a more thorough investigation. In the case of a sole ulcer or white line abscess, therapeutic trimming to remove necrotic tissue followed by application of a block may be required. A block is applied to the healthy claw to increase height and relieve pressure on the affected claw to promote healing. A wheel grinder can be used to lightly rough up the claw surface to improve adhesion of the glue. Glue is applied to the surface of the block and then pressed into place on the sole of the healthy claw. Once the block has been properly applied, the grinder can be used to modify the block if necessary to improve functionality. Treating all lesions begins with a functional trim to restore claw length and balance, followed by therapeutic trimming. When a sole ulcer is identified, Remove all necrotic tissue and slope the area around the lesion. Be careful not to create a hole where dirt and manure can lodge. When removing necrotic tissue around the lesion, take care not to cut into the corium beneath the horn. After all loose horn and necrotic tissue has been removed, apply a block to the healthy claw to relieve pressure and promote healing. The white line is the tissue connecting the hard outer wall of the claw to the sole. Lesions occurring in the white line begin on the bottom of the claw. In severe cases, these lesions can travel up the inside wall of the claw and rupture on the hairline at the top of the claw. These lesions can be extremely painful and create severe lameness. As with sole ulcers, treatment requires removal of all diseased tissue and loose horn, followed by proper application of a block on the healthy claw. Normally, blocks are applied to a healthy claw to relieve pressure and promote healing in the diseased claw. In the case of thin soles, a special thin sole block is actually applied to the affected claw using the same techniques explained earlier in this video. Applying a thin sole block directly on a thin sole provides protection to the walking surface and eliminates wear. This allows the sole to return to a normal thickness. 
When an infectious claw lesion, such as acute digital dermatitis, is present, treatment will often require consultation with the attending veterinarian. The lesion should be thoroughly cleaned to maximize contact with the treatment prescribed. Next, use a minimal amount of vet wrap to hold the treatment in contact with the lesion. The wrap should remain in place for approximately 24 hours. Remove any wraps that remain on after 48 hours. For more information on Zinpro Performance Minerals and hoof trimming, contact your Zinpro representative or visit Zinpro.com.